throughout the civilized world, particularly the Western world, diversity abounds. We see this diversity in our socioeconomic, cultural, and ethnic differences. But hidden beneath the surface, away from the eyes of the casual observer and the merely curious, is another society altogether. A society of secrets, to coin their own phrase. This is the largely invisible world of Freemasonry. I'm Mike Mandel. For the next little while, we'll be examining the beliefs, teachings, and practices of Freemasonry. We'll be speaking with former Masons and reviewing actual Masonic literature to try to gain an objective view of this hidden fraternal order. Our conclusions may prove to be quite startling. But in order to make this material coherent, it's essential to begin with an understanding of what Freemasonry is. Freemasonry defines itself as being a system of morality. The basis of Freemasonry, which all Masons go through, is the Blue Lodge. The Blue Lodge being the first three degrees or levels of Freemasonry. Entered Apprentice, the first degree, Fellow Craft, the second degree, and Master Mason, the third degree. Most Masons never go beyond third degree. Although if one chooses to go beyond the Blue Lodge, there are two routes that can be taken. One is the York Rite, and one is the Scottish Rite. Most Masons who decide to go past the Blue Lodge enter the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. The Scottish Rite has 32 degrees. The 32nd can lead one into the Shriners if one so chooses. The 33rd degree, which does exist, is largely honorary. Author Ian Taylor has extensively researched the origins of modern Freemasonry. To many people, the very word Freemasonry evokes a sense of mystery, secret society, and so on. But in order to find out what they're all about, we need to know a little history. There were many humanist thinkers back in the 1500s who saw the corruption that there was in the church of the day and they concluded that in order to get rid of that corruption they would have to be a new world order. They had read Plato's Republic. Plato's Republic in the 1500s was now a popular work and Plato too was a Greek philosopher living in the 5th century BC and he too was totally fed up with the corruption that there was in government. He said um, if we could have a group of wise men who were well paid to rule over the people, then there would be no corruption. It's a nice thought, but a rather naive one. We've seen such governments today, and they are totally corrupt. But nevertheless, there are still people today, many people, who think that it is a good idea. This then was the agenda for the humanist thinkers back in the 1500s. But in order to do that, they had to first destroy the existing world order. The existing world order based upon the rules of God through the king and through the church. But to even suggest this would have been seen to be heresy in its day and they would have lost their heads quite literally. And so they had to go into a secret society. Now the Freemasons in that day, these were craft masons. These were the men who actually built the cathedrals of the day. They were highly skilled men. Uh, and it was like an early trade union. And they wanted to keep the, the secrets of their skills to themselves. Good reasons for that. And so, um, the, the humanist thinkers infiltrated into the craft Masonic lodges. And they then became the speculative masons. They were called speculative masons by the craft masons because they wouldn't have known a square from a compass. They were just the, the humanists, the, um, the idealists, the academics. And so there are within the Masonic lodges today two types of mason. The craft mason, who is the genuine mason and cut stone and so on. And then there is the speculative mason and he's the humanist thinker. He's the person who has um, purpose is to rebuild a new world order. Author and lecturer Ron Carlson has dedicated two years to researching the subject of Freemasonry. Well modern masonry actually began in the year 1717 in England. Uh, the lodge was formed and many of these things were developed after 1717 in England and then came to America and Canada uh, as people migrated to North America during those years and is widely established here in North America. It's estimated close to five million men are involved in Freemasonry here in North America, perhaps one million in the Shriners. What is Masonry in the eyes of the Freemason? What does the Mason view it to be? Well, you find that most Masons go into Masonry uh, viewing it simply as a fraternal organization, uh, kind of an advanced Boy Scouts because their father or grandfather was involved in Masonry. And they get into it uh, naively, not realizing that it is a religious organization designed for very specific spiritual purposes. Over the centuries, man has evolved a variety of religious beliefs and traditions. Some of these, such as Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, are monotheistic. That is, they're based on the concept of one supreme deity. Others, such as Hinduism, are polytheistic, believing in many gods and goddesses. 
But one of the oldest religions is also the most universal, emerging virtually unchanged in geographically separated and radically diverse cultures. This is the religion of paganism, the worship of the moon goddess and the sun god, whether they're called Isis and Osiris, Apollo and Diana, Cernanos and Aradia, or a host of other names. Paganism is the same mystical religion that first emerged in ancient Babylon thousands of years ago. But what has paganism got to do with Freemasonry? The ritual and theology of Freemasonry really originates from um, Egyptian paganism. And the reason for this is that, as we find, in 1717, the rituals and theology were formalized and brought together and formed the Grand Lodge in England. Uh, the reason being that there were a great many lodges throughout England and throughout Europe at that time. They all had slightly different practices. These practices had originated from the origins of the speculative masons, which of course was Rosicrucianism. The Rosicrucians uh, believed in the Hermetic and Egyptian traditions, and as we'll find in, uh, within Freemasonry, we find Osiris, Adonis, and Isis mentioned quite frequently. So of course these are the Egyptian pagan symbols, pagan gods. One of the um, rituals that was used in some of the lodges prior to 1717, and shortly after in fact, was the uh, ritual of the blood initiation rite. Uh, this was where the uh, little finger was cut and blood was shed, and this was the new member doing that, making a blood covenant with the organization. Uh, what happens is when a mason joins the lodge, he first enters into what is called the Blue Lodge. And the very first thing that every mason is required to do is to go through a initiation ceremony. It's called the Entered Apprentice Degree. And in that uh, initiation ceremony, uh, he will be stripped of much of his clothing, a blindfold will be placed over his eyes, a noose will be placed around his neck, and he will be brought to uh, the door of the Masonic uh, Lodge. And there uh, a person will greet him and usher him in, and there he will come before an altar. And every mason stands before an altar, and there <clears throat> behind the altar is a man called the Worshipful Master of the Lodge. Uh, today we find that when the new member joins the organization, he kneels, he's blindfolded, he's bare-breasted, and the Master of the Lodge touches his left breast with a sharply pointed sword. And they are then required, at, with this blindfold over their eyes, to take a blood oath, not to reveal the secrets of masonry, or they will uh, lose their life. Uh, every mason puts his thumb to his throat and he swears a blood oath not to reveal the secrets of masonry or he'll have his throat cut from ear to ear, his bowels ripped open and given to the beasts of the field. And these pagan blood oaths are taken uh, to swear them to secrecy so they will not reveal the secrets of what they will learn as they progress through the Masonic Lodge. Now most men will go into the Scottish Rite and progress on through 32 degrees and in each one of those degrees, they give worship to different gods and deities, Egyptian gods, Persian gods, Greek gods.